It's Gordon and Louise. We're an Australian couple, happily uh, retired and enjoying uh, life sailing at the moment. Our past history of sailing was um, that I grew up as a child sailing a small dinghies with my parents. But I think your introduction was a bit later, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so in my mid-twenties when I met the family, I met Louise and um, we were sailing together. As the years went by, we were introduced to uh, larger boats with friends and family and eventually on to uh, catamarans. And back in 2006, we purchased our first Fontaine Peugeot Cat, the Arana 44. I think our intention was always that we uh, wanted to have the adventure of doing offshore sailing. So when choosing a boat, FP was an obvious choice to us. We were told, informed of the new model coming out and being excited and wanting to go cruising again, we decided to put our hand up and purchase the Elba 45. And I think we both felt that we hadn't achieved our initial dream, which was to sail a boat from France to Australia and we thought well let's do it and get this boat home so that we can enjoy it with family and friends. So our initial plan uh, when we looked at the Elba was to purchase hull number one. Uh, we were invited up to a dealers meeting in Portugal where we were fortunate to see the boat and that really reinforced our decision. We then took delivery of the boat at a place called Cogland towards the end of October, early November. Our intention when we set out from France, because we had sailed in the Med and across the Atlantic before, we were sort of thinking we'll do that bit quickly. Our navigation route for that was to go from Coghlan to Gibraltar, and that was just Louise and I sailing the boat. In Gibraltar, we were staying at La Linea, the marina across the border, and we there restocked the boat picked up our a friend who came to do the Atlantic crossing with us and from there we went down to the Canary Island to Lanzarote, mm -hmm. replenished the boat and then on towards um, Martinique. Fortunately we had uh, very favourable weather, we had tailwinds all the way so we were able to get across in 16 days from Canaries to Martinique, it was quite a quick crossing for us in the Elba. So we left Martinique on the 9th of February. It was a 1200 nautical mile journey down to Colon, the entry, uh, the entry city on the Atlantic side, the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. So yes, we traveled down there. That was quite a quick passage as well. And we managed to get into uh, Colon or Shelter Bay Marina, which is the probably the preferred marina if you're going to go through the Panama. And luckily I'd organized all this uh, well ahead. The day we arrived actually, we were met by our agent and the next day we were being measured and then we were given a transit a day after that. So we were just, it was very we efficient. couldn't believe how quickly it all happened for us to get through the canal. So that's that was one of our, uh, that was a very memorable sort yeah, of part of our journey. one of our highlights. Yes. For sure. Our American friends then flew home from Panama City. We restocked the boat and we were only there for three nights. Yeah, yeah and it was very quick. Very quick turnaround. We departed for Tahiti then and our plan always was to not stop in Galapagos. We decided we would um, continue and just go straight through to Papiete or actually the Marquises was yeah. our uh, initial um, aim. But as we set off, we initially headed toward the south of the Galapagos to try and get into these so-called trade winds that come up in uh, February, March and April and May and unfortunately the initial part of our trip was okay but the trade winds didn't eventuate as we had expected and then during this part of our journey, the early part, we started to get messages through our communication system we have on board. Yeah, it was through um, family emails. and friends sending us emails just giving us an insight into what was happening at home in Australia but also world news. So uh, we were told that there's no boats to leave Tahiti and fortunately we had a contact who was able to talk uh, to some higher authorities and eventually we were told that yes you can depart. So we were uh, luckily able to go and refuel and then we set off. But the stipulation was we weren't allowed to stop at any other island territory between, us, between Tahiti and Australia. So we left there knowing that we couldn't stop off anywhere, 
but we also left knowing that there was a, um, a tropical low depression forming up around the Solomon Islands. So that was always a concern. So we were, we were weather watching, uh, knowing that this was a possibility. We didn't know it was actually going to develop into this massive cyclone that it did. The advice was coming through that the cyclone was forming and that it was going to be somewhat, a monster. somewhat formidable. Mm. And as it turned out, it was the biggest cyclone to hit that area for 50 years. Now we were, luckily we uh, slowed down enough to let it do its, uh, have its track through the islands. We then traveled to the north as well, uh, keeping the well above it. And eventually it did pass in front and below us. So we were able to avoid the worst of it. So we traveled, uh, we kept out of the way of the site, that cyclone and that was, it wasn't severe, but we did have some really bad weather and squalls uh, eventually and the boat handled that all beautifully actually and at one stage we actually hove to and I don't know uh, if many people have got the experience of having two on a cat. It's the first time we've done it. First time we've done it and you know we dropped our sails, we're in 30 knots of wind, we're in large rolling swell, it wasn't a, a big sea but it was a large swell. The boat just on its own turned side on to the swell and the wind and all of a sudden it was calm. It was just the most amazing feeling. Our boat felt stable. We felt very secure. And uh, it gave Louise and I and Phil a chance to just get some really good sleep. And then the next morning we woke up and we were able to continue uh, towards this weather pattern. It was still in front, but we actually passed through what they call the transition zone. And we went through from a probably a northerly flow around to a southeasterly flow. And that was, once we were in that southeasterly flow, it was a cleaner air and we were away from these rain squalls. So that was a relief to get. We thought, phew, we're on our way home. Yeah. <laughs> another, another highlight too was just the fishing. We did catch some nice mm. fish and I caught a beautiful mahi-mahi, which um, after catching this one fish, I was told I wasn't allowed to fish again. No, I it, don't believe in It was a beautiful, uh, a, a beautiful big fish mm. and he fed us for 10 days, the three of us for 10 days, so. We, the three of us were very proud that we had achieved what we had. Yes. And it, we had to actually stop and think and think, Wow. Wow, <laughs> you know, how many miles have we done, nautical miles, to come all the way from, from France? France to Australia and that was something that we had always dreamt of doing it. The Elba actually is a very, very capable downwind sailing boat and uh, quick, it's stable and very easy to manage. It is, it's a beautiful boat, very, mm. very comfortable, very, very safe and uh, good sailing. I, I felt that uh, when you walk onto the boat, it feels solid. Mm. And uh, and then when you're sailing, there's something about the rigidity of the boat, but also the softness in the ride. The hull has been redesigned. Underwater, the shape of the hull has been changed compared to the earlier boats. And in all sea states, we found the entry into the waves, into the swell, was always a gentle entry. It, was a, it wasn't yeah. a slamming entry. So uh, overall, uh, the boat itself is amazing. The finish, of hull number one was outstanding. No problems at all, really, with the structural uh, design no. finish of the boat. This is just a, such a comfortable boat, uh, a very easy boat to manage. Well, initially, and when we set out, we thought the passage from the Panama through to Marquesas or, or Tahiti would only be 21 days, maybe even less. <laughs> yeah, it ended up being 35 days. days. But it wasn't an issue when it came to um, provisioning. The amount of storage room on the Elba, it's... the fridge is phenomenal. We had beautiful fresh vegetables that stayed fresh. The whole way? The whole way. We were still e eating lovely crisp apples and uh, yeah, it, it was yeah. easy to manage really. One of the things that I, the highlights of this boat for us on the passage was the, uh, well, it was the ease of sailing was one, but that was more, we were doing downwind sailing. So we were broad reaching and downwind sailing most of the time. And the joy of that was we're heading west into the sun in the evenings. We were sitting up on this lounge deck area on the roof. And we'd just sit up there and uh, talk through what, what, what we we'd had happened during the day. But to sit up on that rooftop 
It was it, so it was, comfortable. It was amazing. Like the sail of the boat, we had the Jenica up, the main up, the autopilot sailing the boat. We were doing seven, eight nights, eight knots. What I liked about that You couldn't that hear time. it. You, you just yeah. didn't realise how smoothly and how easy it was. I was just going to say, what I enjoyed about that was that when you went from the saloon up onto the helm and then stepped up onto the roof, you felt like you were in another world. It was uh, quiet and... Comfortable, it's just so beautiful. comfortable, it was lovely.